since I've been gone. And so as these years roll on, I always come back to where I belong. My own time. Have you noticed every way I've changed? Cause to me you simply stayed the same But every time I walk away You leave a little piece of you inside of What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Hometown Sessions. I, of course, once again, am Sully Erna, your host for this stupid show that I've decided to create somehow that has absorbed my entire life. Uh, I'm here at Godsmack headquarters, 
And um, today I'm gonna get right to it, man, because me and this dude are very old friends. We go back quite a ways. He's somebody that's just near and dear to my heart. I love him like a brother, truly. Um, and has written, in my opinion, some of the biggest rock songs in rock history. So before I bring him on board, take a look at what this dude does. <laughs> Welcome, one of my dearest friends and the Melody Master himself, Mr. Aaron Lewis. What's up, brother? What's up, buddy? Oh, look at you. You're looking handsome as ever. Uh, it's just a tan. Oh, it, man. It really, a tan helps. Yeah. Oh, the, I can hear the birds chirping. You must be home in the quiet <laughs> woods of somewhere in Western Mass or Vermont or something. No, man. I'm in Nashville at my house. I'm, I'm, I'm working. Oh, cool. Oh, I didn't yes. even know you had a place in Nashville. Yes, sir. Nice. You doing some more country stuff? No, I'm oh. actually working on uh, working on other things. Really? Like you painting yeah. now? You do you kicking rug? What what are you doing? Self painting. <laughs> Self painting when no one's around. I, I usually <laughs> I, I try to I, I I try to keep it in the shower so that the mess stays all in one spot. <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> um, you no, know, I'm I'll... working on new stain shit. Oh, you are? Uh, oh, Mike's going to be really excited to hear that. You know, I just had Mike come on, and uh, and he, I think he was just kind of not knowing, which, or maybe he was just trying to be real, like, quiet about oh, maybe it. Oh, right? maybe I just really, really fucked up and said something <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say. <laughs> He would no. He, he well. We kind of we got in a little bit, and, and we were just kind of like, "What what's going on? Are you doing any more of Santa Sonia stuff? Are you doing stained?" And he's just like, "Dude, I don't know, man. It's really all up to Aaron because you know he's he does his country thing sometimes, and it's just I'm like, mm, you know, tell yeah, me everything. Pretty 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 sure I just fucked up and let something out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're about here, <laughs> finding the <Fuck>. dirt. <laughs> No, that's good to know, man. Your fans want to know that stuff. They love Stained. We all love you guys. It's good to know. Well, we're 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 toying around with some creativity. It's not like you're giving away any new songs or whatever. We can't hear what's going on, but it's just good to know that you guys are entertaining, getting the next record out. Yeah. Hmm. Nothing. No harm in that. Um, no harm in that at all. Plus, a lot of people. And then I've got a. And then I've got a, a completely acoustic, no coloration to it. It's not going to be country. It's not going to be anything except an Music. acoustic guitar and vocals. Cool. Uh, that's that's coming. That's what's next. Yeah. Right. On. And and there, there's kind of a schedule in place that I, I can't really divulge anymore because I feel like I'm just saying more shit that i'm not <laughs> this is why your management team doesn't give you social the passes this to your is social why, media. yes this is why i'm not allowed on any of my social media pages <laughs> he's worse than donald trump <laughs> tweeting at two in the morning baked hey yeah new check out my new song <laughs> <laughs> um hey man i gotta tell you though listen me and you we go back quite a ways now me and mike were talking a little bit about this too but you know, it's funny when I when I see some of those videos that we, we were bringing on to to remind people of some of the biggest songs that you wrote. It's really it brings me back to those old days, man, when we were touring together back in like oh one, and just I remember you guys breaking. I remember us coming up right around the same time. I remember doing shows together before either one of us really broke. And yeah. it was just it's really cool to reflect back on that. Local real, Palooza. 
Yeah. Even before that, though, I remember we came to open for you guys somewhere in Springfield, Mass, or Western Mass somewhere. There was a cl- yeah. small club, and it was like way back when, you know? Yep, yep. And it was cool, man. It made me really – I think the thing I've been really appreciating – a lot lately is just realizing that being in the game for so long now you have these like very you know two three decade old relationships with some of the people that have been out there in the grind touring and and surviving a lot of the stuff that has killed a lot of the bands along the way yeah. um and it's just it's a, it's a kind of a real proud feeling to kind of know that you know we go back that far and we weathered some of these storms and and here we are still relevant still cranking away still writing music and and uh it's just really you know great to catch up with you and and another thing i want to let you know is um you you really are maybe one of my favorite vocalists in rock too you know i know that there's a lot of stuff that you've done in the country world or whatever too and we'll, we'll touch base on that but as far as like the rock music goes and especially in the ballad form you really i think have written some of the most powerful ballads in rock music and uh i just i'm a fan of your voice you know i'm a fan of your songwriting your melodies your arrangements that you choose it's simple it's powerful but it just translates so well so i guess one of my first questions i wanted to ask you is um well, thank you, man, before you ask. You're thank welcome. You. Yeah, man, you've earned it. And um, I think that's why people come to see you sing is to hear your voice. You have a very powerful voice. And um, so, but who was your guy, dude? Like when you were growing up, at what point did you transition? Were you born into music or was there someone that poked out to you that you were like, I'm going to sing and play guitar? <sighs> it was seeing my dad. My, my mom and dad were very musical. There was always some sort of band practice happening at the house when I was really young. And, and, and you know, uh, a Rickenbacker Beetle bass was put in my hand at five years old, and I learned a couple songs on that. And I was like, I, I really just, I want to play guitar because I'm watching my dad play the guitar. Mm. And, and for me, it was learning to play the guitar was always a medium to be able to sing over. I I would never learn to play the guitar to be a guitar player. Yeah. That's why I suck. (laughs) I'm not, I I am, I'm not a very technically advanced guitar player. I, I'm a cowboy chord guy. You're a songwriter. I I utilize my tools in a very, uh, a, a very what's the word i'm looking for it's simple just a simple way i i'm not trying to impress anybody with with my guitar stature guitar yeah. for me was always just something to sing over yeah man i know exactly what you're talking about because if someone i couldn't play a lead to save my life for instance like i i feel the same way when it comes to using what I have is tools in my toolbox to, to be the best songwriter I can be. And, you know, it's not about, for me, it's not about technique and it's not about being a shredder, you know, being the Eddie Van Halen's and the Nuno's and the Joe Satriani's and all that. That's not the kind of guitar player I am either. And so I feel like we share a lot of that in similarities where for, I think what me and you do is just try to focus on the best melodies, the best arrangements for the, the skeletal structure. Exactly. Which is what I love about it. And then I have no problem having no pride about now everybody that's way better at what they do than than I am. Yeah. You know, I could never play the shit that Mike plays. Yeah, yeah. I need Mike. Yeah, yeah. I I need Mike to add his parts. He's another tool in the toolbox. I I need old school to add his parts. I I can't I'm not gonna write his bass parts. He I need him. Yeah, exactly. I need I need Sal to to bring his drum parts together. That's right. Uh, Like it's a it's a it's a very symbiotic thing. That's right. Yeah. They're all tools in the toolbox. And to me, that's why I tell people they're so surprised when they ask me. Who, like, who's your favorite songwriter in the whole world? And I'm like, for me, it's Elton John. Easily. Right. That's an easy question for me. Because I know he didn't write the lyrics. That was Bernie Topin's thing. But he's the dude that had to put those lyrics up on a, my, on a stand and start playing and singing, finding the melodies. And to me, all that arrangement, all that is Elton. And he's brilliant and to do that, that. And to do that to lyrics. Like, I can't do that. Yeah. I have to have the musical landscape down. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I can then go, okay, this this melody line threads through that landscape. I, I can't do it the other way around. I, I, a lot I, of people I, have tried. Even Billy Joel said, I try to do it Elton's way. I can't do it. He goes, I don't know how I, that dude I, does I, it. I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even know where to begin by starting with... Like lyrics and a melody, lyrics or, 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 or and not lyrics even your lyrics, though. That's the difference. Like, if I was to prop up a page in front of you and go, Go ahead, write a song, you sit there and you go, It's not your story, it's not personal to you. How do you connect to it? And then, how well, do you? Well, I'll tell you, I had to do it. Yeah, I had to do it. It's gonna come out, it's coming out. The first half of it, the 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 volume one already came out of the Johnny Cash stuff. Oh, cool. On volume two. I took a song that was literally just torn out of a notebook that had never been turned into a song before. It was Johnny's poetry. Wow. And I turned it into a song. That's really cool. That was very cool. That's really and, cool. And and that was that was quite an experience to be a part of. I did it in his in his cabin on his property in the cabin where all of his later stuff was recorded wow. where where hurt was recorded where that whole record was recorded wow. that's where I, I did it i did it in the room that 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 he sang in the last places that he made music and created before he passed away wow. I, I did it in that room that's really with, cool with with his son wow wow with his son too holy crap yeah, his son produced the whole thing. Oh, that's killer, man. Oh, I can't wait to hear that. And I'm a huge fan of Johnny Cash. Even though country wasn't never really my thing, I actually find myself liking it more now than I ever have. And I think people like Chris Stapleton and that kind of stuff just brought it a little closer to the blues for me than the old traditional twangy country that I just was never a fan of. But again, I just, you know, I respect all genres of music, so... Um, but you know who else did something like that was Nuno. He actually somehow was able to, don't stop messing with your phone. Uh, I, on. Oh, don't I'm stop. sorry. My hand was in the way. Don't stop I, was trying to make you, I was trying to make you brighter. You're nice and clear. Leave it alone. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Fans, they love your face right now. They're all <laughs> texting. Um, so, um, but Nuno actually had told me that, I can't remember what the deal was, but someone from the estate of the doors was able to give him they found some old literature from uh, Jim Morrison that had never been put into a song. It was just him um, uh, talking poetry onto a, like a cassette tape. And somehow they... they Probably wrote, all fucked up on acid or something. All fucked up, but, but they wrote music <laughs> to it, man. And it's, it's Jim Morrison actually doing his thing and the sky is blue and whatever he's doing, right? And they're, and they're jamming and somehow Nuno got it in key and like they did this whole cool trippy thing, but it's Jim oh, Morrison's cool. voice. And I'm going, what the fuck? From the grave, this guy's still putting out songs. Very, so, very cool. Um, yeah, man, it's... Uh, so, so here's another thing I wanted to ask you because uh, I, I just thought it would be good for some of the people here that watch the show to hear it from some of my friends, people that are in the industry like you, people that have done well for themselves and you know are able to kind of shield yourself for the most part while all this craziness is going on in the world. But what, what are some of the things that maybe you can tell the fans to give them some advice on how they could pass time when they're starting to feel the stress of all this tragedy, of all this isolation, what do they do with their time? They already have maybe some mental illness problems or anxiety or, you know, they suffer from this or that. And this is kind of triggering it more. And I just thought maybe you could share some of the stuff that maybe you do or how you get through stressful moments because... I think um, at least the one thing they probably connect to with you as well is in your lyrics, you know, sometimes you paint a pretty clear picture about maybe something that's affected you somehow on an emotional level. And I think that, you know, they see you as a person that maybe has had the ups and downs and not just had it easy your whole life. So in times like this, what do you do when some of those testing moments hit you, you know? You know... A lot of times, just just stopping for a minute, just just truly yanking the emergency brake and stopping for a minute, and and taking a couple, you know, 
clearing breaths and think about how much worse it could be. Mm. And, you know, a, a lot of times just the thought of how much worse so many of the stories that I've heard over the years from fans that have related to my songs have been than my story. That, you know, because what I don't, I'm not sure that all the fans realize that, that I have over the years that have sent me those those letters and 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 said those things how much i've gotten from that too oh that's cool yeah you know they've inadvertently they've helped me just as much as i've inadvertently helped them um well when you're stuck you know you're sitting home and let's say you're just having a bad day so yeah it's, it's, it could be something you know whatever triggers tough. it it's so, like, listen, you, I have I have mechanisms in in me that that are just able to this protectively disconnect from that stuff. Yeah. Like from from the things that I've been through in my life and 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 at a young age and and my my whole protective mechanism in my in my psychology is is so complex and and i i find it abnormally easy to to leave behind things that that would be otherwise you know really difficult to deal with mm. just from what i've dealt with yeah and that that just that security mechanism that was created by a you know a little boy that yeah, that yeah. is still there that is just more complex than ever that really that you know it's one of those things where you can you can forgive you can get over you can move forward but it doesn't necessarily change the fact that that it it, it encoded itself into your psyche and it totally and it and it 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 affects how you perceive things it affects yeah. how you react to things it affects without it being right there in the forefront you can you can have let it go mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that that the 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 residuals aren't still there yeah of course yeah, definitely how people react is is one of the key words because I think that's what we've been trying to help people with that battle from depression, severe depression, some of these people. We actually had an amazing um, licensed um, so, uh, therapist come on at one point on the, some of the earlier sessions. And since then, I heard this guy has done some really amazing things. Like he dedicated... He, every day on the Scars Foundation Facebook, he goes on and he does two hours of free sessions for either privates or for group, uh, for people that are struggling with, you know, the isolation of COVID or the things that they've already kind of had going on. And now this just is triggering struggling. it deeper. Yeah, struggling. Just struggling. Yeah, you and know, and I heard he just actually flew out um, to, to meet up with uh, another guy that was not doing well and actually on his own dime jumped on a plane and went to deal with this guy. And I heard he's, the guy's doing great now, but I think it's those kind of actions that, you know, for me, I try to let people know that the biggest thing right now that we have to do is just find a way to kill some time because this stuff will clear out. It's not going to last forever, whether it's the protests, whether it's the riots, whether it's COVID, whatever else the thing can go on trip up the world right now it won't last forever so the key to this is creating time so find things to pass time whether you're a painter whether you're a musician whether you want to get things done around your house work out shed some pounds i don't know what it is but people just need to pass time and time will correct it eventually because we will get past it you know yeah um whoa you just changed the whole background <laughs> where'd you go <laughs> Well, my phone had a heat stroke. Oh, okay. And shut off on me, and I realized that my back deck was a little sunnier than I thought it was. So the front deck now at this time of day is nice and shady. So yeah, it looks good. 
had had, had to move. Yeah. So, so what do you think, man? Like, you know, is there things that you can maybe recommend? Like, okay, I, I'm going to paint you a quick picture. So you are a single mom living in a small apartment, working three jobs, COVID hits, wipes you out, no job. You're trying to feed your kid. You already kind of battle, you know, you know, whether it's, it's anxiety or depression and things like that as it is. Now this thing is triggering all your fears because no money's coming in. You're not sure what's going on with the world. You feel unsafe with everything around you that's happening. And so how do you get those people to find something to not only calm them, but a way for them to pass time? <sighs> it's tough, you know? I mean, every situation's different, but... It's so tough, and and we, I mean, this is where this is where looking to something bigger than yourself comes into play. This is where you know the the pure aspect of religion comes into play not what it's been turned into right having faith in something having faith in something greater than yourself yeah. and and just knowing that you know without without getting all bible knowing that god has a plan knowing that that there's something greater than yourself that that that, that is going to see us through all this yeah you know it, it's pretty overwhelming if you if you look out. Yeah, you got to have faith for sure. I mean, I, you know, the religion thing, I think we've all kind of covered enough to know that most people I think now are smart enough to just have faith, you know, do what works for you. Doesn't have to mean you have to follow a certain religion if you're just confused about that. So if something works for you, then good for you. I don't have anything against any religions, to be honest with you. But for me, I've chose spirituality over religion because I feel like I'm a spiritual person. I believe in karma. I believe in being a good person. Good things happen. You know, you're a bad person. You kind of live a shitty life. Um, but I do think that people need to have faith and know that, you know, if if history has taught us anything, this too shall pass. It will, it won't stay the same forever. Every massive thing that's ever happened in history from the wars to the Spanish flus to the, you know, all the, anything that's, you know, that's tipped us upside down, we always prevail. We're Americans. That's what we do. We're stronger than all. And we cannot let this be a vulnerable time where we start to look weak. You got to stand up, protect your kid, protect your family, you know, do what's right. And, and just know that, you know, time will fix this, you know, and we just got to get through these moments and life will get back to where we know and, and, uh, you know, get busy again so but it's it's tough it's tough i mean my 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 father's coming up on 80 years old and and it is can't even wrap his head around what's going on what what's been going on in this country and 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 just can't even like when when the country shut down yeah did the country shut down like yeah he we, must be we've, going, what we've going been on? we've been through some some crazy crazy things in the history of this country and the country never shut down yeah like there's a lot of things that have happened recently that that my dad in that generation and and even myself i never thought in a million years i'd see what i'm seeing right now in my lifetime yeah i'm scared to death for my kids yeah it's crazy it's crazy, but it's, it's going to get better, man. And you know, it's it up will. to us. It, it, it we're will, the people, but it we're the people it controlling how this. Crazy it is. Listen, the government's the government, right? We've dealt with that stuff. We know that politics are politics and we know that we're not always told the truth and people hide shit. And that's part of being the sheep of the, you know, under the government's thumb. But at the same time, we, the people, let's not forget that, right? Cause we control this country and we dictate what happens. So the weaker you act, the weaker we will be. The stronger you act, the stronger we will be. And it's mental. I'm not talking about physical. I'm not talking about going up and hitting everyone over the head with boards. I'm talking about be a strong human being. Know what you stand for 
and act that way. Go after what your rights are because there's a constitution that protects you. Even though some parties are trying to fuck all that up, you know, we still have, I think, as people, control of, you know, getting out there and just making a difference. Because in the end, if we lose this country, it's because the people acted out of line and lost this country for us. Not anything beyond that, you know? They just need to know how to defend this country and maybe some strong guidance from leadership wouldn't be so bad either. But I think everyone's just confused right now, you know? Anyways, let's fuck it. This just went from like music to politics and here you we go. You did that. I didn't do it. <laughs> Wasn't um, me. Hey, so let me ask you another question because I am sure there's a lot of people that may know these answers, but there's probably a lot of people that never got to the interviews or found them from you. What may, tell them a little bit about what made you transition from, uh, you know, doing stuff like Stained to the country world. Like what was that? Um, <laughs> honestly, it was it was the one direction that I could go from my history, from my childhood, that wasn't necessarily completely reinventing my wheel. I was brought up on country music. Oh, wow. it, it was to the point where when I was able to choose my own music, I would have chose anything but the country music that I was force fed as a kid. It, I had no choice. It was just on all the time. So it was a way to go in a completely different route that wouldn't be compared to Stained mm -hmm. in any way. The last thing I wanted was Stained Light. Yeah, compete with each other. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want I, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. So it was the one direction that I could go that I wouldn't have been like completely going somewhere that not that I didn't have a business, any business going there, but I but it was the one place that I could go that that I had a, a, a there's there's a whole bunch of music in my in my psyche and in my childhood memories and, and everything that's still there that comes out in in the country music that I write now because I certainly don't listen to today's country music. Yeah. That's not country music. I don't even know what the hell it is. It's like the land of the misfit toys. So you're more you're more raised and and do you feel that your country music it leans more towards the traditional older school? Country? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where it comes from. It's yeah. that's that's where it's in my embedded into my into my whole thing from being force fed it as a child. Well, you know what too? It makes sense knowing that you're such a good songwriter, you know, like you're one of the dudes that I admire because you can pick up an acoustic, sit down, write some chord arrangements, simple, right to the point, And you can belt out a melody and it's really strong. Even I think you proved that to the world when you did the acoustic version of outside just sitting there with an acoustic and singing strong melodies. So it kind of makes sense to me because country music really is about songwriting, you know, telling the about story, the words. telling the story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but is there any country artists of today that you actually do like? Like how do you like Chris Stapleton's and those kind of people or? Um, I, I, I have a much greater appreciation for Chris Stapleton's music and his work and, and I really like uh, Jamie Johnson as far as a newer artist. Um, uh, there's a couple. You, you know, to be honest with you, Sully, I don't listen to music very much. Yeah, neither do I. I really, I, I, I well, live when I, I do, I but I don't listen to the stuff. I, I don't tend to. If I'm in my car and I'm driving, I'm listening to talk radio. I'm yeah. not. I'm not listening to music. Yeah. I. I live and breathe music for most of my my time that is awake. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's like my it's it's kind of it's kind of falling into it's fallen into a situation of it's my job. It's not what I want to do when I'm not working. Hmm. Like the last thing I want to do is pick up a guitar and 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 play at a gathering or, or, you know, when it's, when it's time to write, then it's time to write. Yeah.
and then I will put the guitar in my hand and I'll swap through all the old guitars that I've got that all have ghosts, every single one of them. And I just go through the guitars and pick up one guitar and start playing and, and a song will come out and I'll pick up a different guitar and start playing and a song will come out. Cool. And I just, I just utilize the ghosts that are in these old guitars and and that's when it's time to write when it's not time to write when i'm just working and in 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 music mode of playing three shows a week the last thing i want to do is pick up a guitar mm. when i'm not working yeah now do i love picking up the guitar to walk out on stage and play that show it's the whole reason i've dealt with all the bullshit that's come along with it yeah you know as well as I do, yeah. it makes all the shit worthwhile when you walk out on that stage and you hear the reaction of the crowd from being able to see you standing there on stage. Yeah, yeah. There's totally. nothing that there's there's no drug on the the, the the day that they come up with that drug is the day that every single person on the face of this earth is an addict. Mm -hmm. that's Seriously, yep, there's that's there's powerful. there's jumping out of a plane you know there's there's only one thing that i've done in my lifetime that's come close to that feeling that me and you know eating twinkies spotting <laughs> and stalking a black bear oh stop on foot with a bow oh here we go with now a bow now you're gonna have all the animal activists chasing us on the show. no i i missed <laughs> I missed. I was so worked up and shaking so much that I missed. But I—that's an I adrenaline, stopped. though. That's 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 an, the purest adrenaline I've ever felt in but my life. I, don't you think, though, it's a different kind of adrenaline than this that 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 that, that high that you get on stage? What you come on when you get on stage, it's more of a high. The adrenaline is more of like a rush, right? Don't you think? All I know is that when I drew back on that bear, thirty-two yards from that bear with nothing but a wide open field and in, in between us and a bow and arrow I, I when that when i shot and missed and that bear ran away i literally crumpled to my knees uh -huh. and was hyperventilating like i couldn't it was it, i think it was probably more intense wow well i'm glad the little guy got away he wasn't little. I, I, I wish the cub would have came and sp spanked you on the bum while you were kneeled <laughs> over. <laughs> it was like it was like a VW bug. It uh, was it was absolutely giant. Well, I do know what you're saying though, because music really. I mean, that's the, you know, listen, that saying exists for years. Music is a drug for a reason because you know. Well, really, you go into it, the studio and you make that music and you do all that creativity yeah. so that you can go out on stage. Yeah. And, Play it for people totally and and it's it really is something that's that you know that you truly get a high from because it's something that first of all i try to explain to people it's something that doesn't exist so it's not like you work in some cubicle and someone hands you a bunch of papers to type in the computer that day and blah 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 and i'm not downing any of those people that have a regular everyday job that has to follow the rules of a corporation or a boss but for us our job is different our job is to wait for the genius to pass through you and hope that it's something great that he wanted to show up and, and, uh, oh, you know, we're, and we're, deliver with you today. <laughs> we're totally, we're totally trying to bottle a bolt of lightning. You know, the creativity has to be right. Everything has to be right for others to think that it's as good as you hoped it was. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of chemistry that has to happen within a song for 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 people to to get it yeah there, there's a lot of people out there that write songs every day that that don't translate to the listener to the same the same way exactly it's there's music it's music it's a song it has a chorus it has words but were those words the right words was that melody the right melody was that chord progression the right chord progression? Was that was that riff the right riff? There, there's a lot of chemistry that all has to come together 
for for a song. But it, to... my point is, it doesn't exist before it hits. So you right. search for it, or it passes through you, one or the other. And and by the way, for all you kids watching, this is Aaron rolls his own cigarettes. <laughs> it's CBD. There you go, perfect. It helps him sleep in, in the afternoon. Everyone's like, hey, give me a hit of that thing right now. Um, but yeah, you know, music, ultimately though, where I was going with this is that, you know, we talk about music as a drug or whatever. It's because music really is an anomaly. When you think about it, it's an anomaly, right? It, it's, it's one of those things when you break down music, you start thinking, well, music is really nothing more than sound waves, you know, a guitar is a bunch of sound waves coming together. These frequencies mesh. But if you keep going down that rabbit hole and you realize what really is a frequency, it's nothing more than a vibration. And so that's to me is where the anomaly comes in, because if music is nothing more than things vibrating, right? How is it that when these vibrations come in contact with our body, it creates emotion? And that is truly the mystery and the gift of music for me. And it's what I discovered in doing my own solo stuff when I was working with some of these world musicians uh, well, and, and I cellists. Think there's something, I think and I'm there's like, something to that, like the way that the monks and they, they, the, the, the tones that are created and the tone that if you go back to, to, to the history of meditation and everything else, and they've always meditated to, to certain tones and certain frequencies and, and and that that crazy stuff that some of those monks do where they make multiple tonalities with their vocal cords oh yeah and that's all a, a deep a deep trance and hypnosis and and they're they're like they're totally they're they're like transcending to a different consciousness yeah cuz that's my point Pretty is powerful. that music heals you know and and i don't mean that I mean, I mean that literally. Music is a healer. It really does. How many, how many emails have you answered that your song, they heard it, it changed their life or saved their life? I mean, over and over again as artists, that's the kind of messages we get back from people is that your music truly, literally saved my life. Right? It's a big message. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's surprisingly a big weight to carry. Yeah. You know that that's something that I actually that that's that actually ends up on my shoulders a little bit. Totally. You know, it's it's kind of weird how that happens too because I wasn't trying to do that. Mm -hmm. That certainly was not my objective. My objective was to get it off my fucking chest because I needed to say it. I I desperately needed to say so many of the things that I said in those songs back then. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Most of us creatives are are fucked up. Yeah. Most of us creatives are broken in some way, shape, or form. From amen to that. From, <laughs> from, from, from childhood, from life, from from something. Yeah. Most of us have have a have a, a a void inside of us that we we desperately feel the need to fill. That otherwise we wouldn't go to the lengths that we go to to do what we do. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a void there somewhere that I'm desperately trying to fucking fill. Yeah. That that. But thank God for music, because without it, how could you have vented those emotions? How are you able to use that? How would you what would your outlet would have been if, if it, it would, wasn't, it, you know, it would, it, I, it, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know if I could even say that I would still be here if I didn't have that that outlet at that time. It, yeah. You know, it was, it, it's, you know, I, I don't, I, I try not to take any of this shit too seriously, you know, most yeah. definitely, especially myself. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't, I, I don't know how I would have made it to here if I didn't have it. Yeah. You know, it's I, a I gift. Know. Like I said, it's a gift, man. It's a gift from the universe and people shouldn't take it for granted. And it certainly is one of those things that you don't have to be a musician, that if you're going through tough times, even right now with all this isolation and the crap on this lockdown and whatever else is stressing people out and making them afraid, I know that you don't need to be a musician to use music to get you through the tough times because that's one of the beautiful things about music. 
it never asks anything of you in return. It's always there for you when you need it. And there's something about the tones, the sound waves, the frequencies that somehow vibrate against us. Because even your dr eardrums, if you think about it, dude, your They're eardrums just vibrate. They're just vibrate. vibrate. Yeah. The hairs and vibrate, yeah. whatever it is. So it's that's the biggest anomaly about music that trips me out. And I don't know how to explain it sometimes, but it really, it really, when I think about it, it's one of those, it's kind of like space, right? So for me, space was another one of those things where I go, if I really think about space, I freak out a little bit because there's no end to it. It's endless. Yeah. Someone tells me that like you can just shoot off the planet on any direction. You don't have to go up, down, sideways, shoot straight down. It doesn't matter which way the globe is. Shoot off of it and go no lefts, no rights. Just fucking go straight forever and it never ends ever. That's that fucks with me. You know, I, numbers, I mean, you can always add one. I'm like, really? What's the highest? There's got to be the highest number in the world. No, because you can always add one to it. I'm like, ah, those things fuck with me. And music is one of them. When I went down that rabbit hole and I started to realize, like, wow, music is really nothing more than vibrations. A guitar has six strings that when you tune it lower, it vibrates low. When you tune it up high, it vibrates high. A drum, you hit it, the head vibrates. A piano string vibrates. A vocal cord vibrates. Everything is just a vibration. So why is it? That if these are nothing more than simple vibrations, why is it that when those vibrations come in contact with your body, it creates emotion? Because let me just say this real quick too. Hold on. So I, I is another thing that I wanted to um, bring to people's attention. So the first time I asked someone that question, like why does music create emotion? The first thing they go to is like, oh, well, it's the lyrical content. It's a sad song. Okay, it could add to it, but why is it you can sit there and listen to a violin player play alone and bring tears to your eyes? Right. Right? And, and why does why does one vibration sound better than another vibration? Well, that was what I was going to say. How come one thing is like the major chord just sounds uplifting and like ah, like a fresh of breath air. But and a minor yet you chord go minor, so you sad. go it feels heavy immediately. You don't even yeah. have to say a word. You could play an E major on your guitar right now, or you could switch to an A minor, and you'll be like, wow, that's sad. And But why? Who made that decision that this is going to be happy and this is going to be sad? Yeah. Right? It's definitely a rabbit hole, for it's sure. It's fucking awesome, man. That's why I love music. Music is, is a journey within itself, and so you don't have to be a musician. You just need to like let music guide you through a lot of this stuff. If that's, you know, if, if you're in a moment right now and things aren't going well, man, lay on your couch and put on one of your favorite records or a record from your childhood and go back to that time and place when you first heard it. Cause that's another thing that's beautiful about music is it acts as a time machine, right? It really can take you right back there. And I just think, I don't know anything else that can do that except for scent where you could smell something. Yeah, and go, yeah. Oh, that's my grandmother's house, you know? No, there's definitely there's definitely things in the universe that are triggering like that. Yeah, and scent is one, and and and, and song is another Music. one. Yeah, and uh, what's a deja vu? Well, I what's don't know it? what that is. <laughs> deja mean, I know, vu. I, I know what it is. Like but where, I mean... where you where where you totally feel like you've done that before. I know, I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. Right. But we're going down rabbit holes, so I figured I'd throw one out. Yeah, that could be like past life regression <laughs> stuff or, you know, <laughs> hey, man, you know, the people who do believe that we've been here and walked this earth many, many times before, you never know. You know, they say, well, let's not go here because if we can start getting into souls reuniting and all that, this fucking show is going in a whole different direction. <laughs> um, hey, man, so what what's coming up for you? Um, so we, we know you. Oh, and by the way. Um, I'm going to ask you a, a question. I want to see where you go with this because Mike, Mike gave me his answer. So let's see where this goes. All right. I was telling people back in the early day when, when me and you and well, Godsmack and Stained, I should say, were playing earlier in the clubs, you know, getting the record deal and that kind of thing. Um, I was telling Mike that I don't know how you guys were, but man, we used to, me and Robbie especially would fucking brawl like brawls like on stage fucking 
he was freaked out because he had never worked with a musician like me before where I'm more of a wild child and he was more conservative painter, played in country bands and reggae and, you know, did his thing and his two step. And I was like punk rock guy. Right. So when I became a singer or tried to become a singer, I was going, what the fuck do I do with my hands? Because I'm so used to being a drummer, first of all. So I'm trying to be a showman and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So I'm just throwing mic stands and shit would be going by him and he wasn't having it. So we would <laughs> fucking brawl. And um, I remember doing this cookout once in the backyard of someone's house. And it was, you know, I didn't throw it at him. I was just throwing it out of the way, you know, or speakers would be squealing. You know, those days when fucking monitors and just shit and fucking wing the mic stand. And then I'd see Robbie bro, coming at me. What the fuck? And he's just like, I'm fuck quit and quit on stage and would fight. And then the, the band would keep playing and me and him are like arguing and running off the stage and any good brawls? No, no, any good stained brawls? Not with the band that everybody knows. The original Stained had a different bass player. Okay. Who drank himself out of the band after about a year, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. And that's when we got old school and we continued. And it was way before we ever got a deal or anything. But the original bass player, there was there was definitely on stage turmoil he'd be so fucking drunk that he'd start a completely different song and not realize that he was playing a completely <laughs> different song than what we were playing and would get really pissed off when we were saying anything about it because he was better than all of us as a musician it, you know as far as he was concerned oh that's good that's some mick mara shit like you just Tommy Lee would tell me once, he goes, first of all, Mick would have his guitar so fucking loud that he can't hear anyone else. So he would just be playing like one song and they'd be in another song and he'd, he didn't even know they were in another song. He's just playing through it and like, stop. I, re I remember doing a show at CBGB's when we were trying to get a record deal and our first drummer um, had a bad drug problem too. And... Uh, we were doing Moon Baby, and the end is that loop. It just keeps fucking going. But there's a certain time, and then it, you know, finales, and it's over. And dude, he just, this thing went on for like three fucking minutes. We're like, and the fucking song. It was just so bad. And I was, yeah. so I love, I love hearing like band stories just the same way I like asking people about their brother and sister fights, childhood fights and all that shit. So, Cause to me, you know, a band is a marriage. It's a relationship. You have to learn four different people or three different people from three different parts of the world that had three different upbringings. And it's a marriage. Me and, and Waisaki used to go at it pretty good. Who? Waisaki. Waisaki. Yeah. The drummer. Oh, is it, was it John? John. Yeah. John. Yeah. Me and John used to go at it pretty good. Which is uh, weird, because why, why, why is a drummer and a singer fighting? I don't know, <laughs> man. It, there was, there was just, I, I, I didn't put up with this shit, and I called him out on it. Uh, and, and I don't know. Me and him always went at it, though. There's always one. My every drummer I've ever played with hated me because I'm a fucking drummer. <laughs> The only one that really clicked with me is Shannon because we always had this mutual respect for each other. But drumming, they were just like, ah, you know, they knew I was a player. So I'm sitting there writing the drum parts and they just didn't, you know, it didn't go over well. But, you know, when you got the vision, you just got to roll with it. Shannon, I don't have to worry about that stuff. Uh, I mean, I had a vision on a couple songs on that last stained record that, that, I mean, it's even, it, I'm not saying it, I'm not divulging any new information it was on that that dvd that we did um about making that last record but mike was ready to quit oh really be because of because i had taken a song that we had recorded and i started chopping it up and taking parts out and switching parts around and and making a bridge a verse and <laughs> and, and i just flip-flopped and fucked with the whole song 
and he wasn't having it. And it turns out, you know, later down the road, you know, about a month, month and a half after, after the record was done and Mike was able to live with it for a while, you know, the songs ended up being some of his favorite songs on the record. Yeah. But that's but surprising it was, because it was, he, he, it was, I, mean, uh, I, would, I would think it he was would... a tightrope there for a little bit. Was that in the earlier days, you mean? No, this was on the very last Thane Oh, record. the last, that's right, you just said that. Um, we did a DVD while we were making it and everything. It was, it was it's pretty brutal. It's on It's on YouTube, you can go and check oh, it good. out. It's, yeah, that's what we need it, to see. We need it's to see the hour, static. It's a, I almost have a, I, I don't even, I won't watch it. I you won't watch it. It's like, uncomfortable. Oh, it's really? It's uncomfortable to watch. Well, yeah. Come on, you got to look back at that shit and fucking laugh. It's just no, part I'm, of the process. No, I've... I've I've commented on it. You know, I, I'm a dick in the studio, <laughs> in the fucking studio. I'm a fucking dick, you, yeah. you know? Well, you know what it and is, I'm, dude. I'm not easy. I, I don't make things easy. And I, and I, and I put myself under unnecessary stress and I do a lot of things that, that then create the magic at the end of it all. But, but I don't make the process easy at all. I bet. And I'm super hard headed and I hear shit the way that I hear it. And it's hard to fucking get me to fucking hear it differently. So listen, and I, I'm, I just, I'm going to, I'm going to be your therapist for a second. Okay. Me and Aaron are going to have a little session because <laughs> I understand this. I'll I, own it though. I'll own it's it. Good. I, I know I'm a fucking dick, but listen, listen, I'm going to help you here. I'm going to help you in a couple <laughs> different ways. One way is I'm going to help you by saying, I totally understand because in my earlier days, I definitely was way more bullheaded and controlling because it's not that you're trying to be a dick. It's that it's because you have a vision and you are already so far ahead in your mind on how the finished song sounds and people, you haven't taken people along the way on that journey to get them to that finished product in your head. So you have to kind of handhold a little bit, not in a baby way, but just in a way that you're sharing the creative process. So it's good that you acknowledge that because as you do it more, you may get a little bit more conscious of being um, uh, like sh sharing the information and allowing them to feel a part of the creative process with you rather than just going, ah, it's already done here. We got to do this, 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 and this. And they go, well, what the fuck are we here for? <laughs> like, you're going to just lay it all out. So I get that part because your brain works fast like mine does when it comes to hearing something. I hear the whole song. Exactly. I, hear I, I know what the tones song. sound I hear, like. I hear all the. I hear the bass line. I hear the guitars. I hear the. I hear the everything. I can't do it, but I hear it. You hear it. So what you gotta do now? I'm gonna help you with the second half. <laughs> the second half is we're doing therapy here. This is important. The second half is now you have to learn how to articulate that to your bandmates and allow them to be a part of the creative process. So my advice is you say, hey, listen, man, got this thing. I kind of hear all these parts. Let me lay it out for you. Let's put it together as I hear it. But then as we move through it, if you hear something and you need to like work with it or you wanna, let's make some adjustments, we can, we can um, audition all that stuff and see what feels the best. But at least get your stuff out lay it out the way you want to and your band will follow your lead but when you just fucking are just drilling and like dictating i'm in the moment man that's I'm in the when moment. they uh -huh. I, 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 you know sometimes in the moment of creativity and the throes of passion we don't always fucking handle our shit the proper way that's right and you know what else someone said to me recently so i had one of my favorite comedians on his name's robert kelly he's from a Bo he's a boston guy too he lives in new york now but he's a boston guy he goes, you know what our problem is in Massachusetts? We have tone issues. And I'm like, that's perfectly said. We're People not think I always think I'm angry. <laughs> We're not People angry. Always... We have tone issues. So you need to remember that when you're in the studio with your brothers <laughs> who are helping you create your vision, because they know that you're their fearless leader and they can't do this without you either. Just like you know you can't do it without them. They know that. But how you handle that is the difference between how you guys click and get along or how you guys are just going to like, pff, whatever, I let him fucking do what he wants to do. And then all that shit starts. Not good. It's not healthy for the relationship. <laughs> tone issues. So watch your tone. Uh, Robert I Kelly, have... Robert Kelly would go like this. He goes, 
Yeah, I'd go into a hotel and he's like, and she'd be like, oh, how are you today, sir? He's like, good, how are you? Oh, something wrong? No, what's wrong with you? And she's like, well, I don't know, you just seem angry. He's like, I'm not angry. Now I'm fucking angry because you're asking me what's wrong. In the first place, there's nothing wrong. It's just tone issues. So, there you go. Uh, I, could be, I could be guilty of that. Yeah, listen, man, I get it as an artist, you know, we're, we're, we're working quickly in our minds. When, when you said it the best, when the bolt of lightning strikes, you have to capture it in a bottle or it goes to heaven with all the other great ideas that we fucking lost along. How many ideas have you lost along the way? That they're gone, right? And you're like, God, that was a good fucking melody. No way to document the, it. 30 in the last three days. <sighs> That's Just the worst. Fucking going for a fucking drive in the convertible. That's why I use this bad boy right here. Yeah. It has a nice start. voice recorder on it, and it's actually really good for vocals and acoustic. Amazing compression. There's no <laughs> reason why you should ever lose an idea again. Hit yeah. voice recorder. That's it. I'm irresponsible. It's built into your phone. I'm sure that thing is glued next to you half the time. You have kids. So... Uh, before we wrap up, tell us um, what's coming up, man. Stained country. I knew you gave us a little snapshot, but you got a schedule in mind. We're going to see you out on the road. 21. You're going to be working um, through as, the year. I, as far as I know, I have shows on the books in August. This August? Yeah. Oh, good luck with that. I've got shows on the books. We'll okay. see how it goes. We'll see what happens. I'm optimistic. Um, I'm optimistic on on the fact that it's we're now out of our normal flu season, which means that the the the, the numbers are going to naturally go down. Which means that for a little bit we can go back to 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 normal here as long as we can get through these 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 riots yeah please don't even get me started ever since the riots what happened do you see anything about covid on tv now that the riots are going on it's unbelievable it's gone like covid went away now it's riots so uh unbelievable um but but you're gonna you you have shows set up for what country for the solo stuff yep cool and uh, and all of the stained shows that were on the books for this year have all been moved to next year yeah uh, like so we'll, most people's schedules. We'll probably be seeing you on some of them. On the festivals, yeah, I'm I would sure. probably assume so. Yeah. Um, and The rest of the year, what are you going to do? Be creative. Cool. Be creative. Uh, I've, got, I've got an acoustic record to write. I've got other things to write. <clears throat> so you're gonna, you guys are entertaining some new stain stuff, but you're doing, are you working on another country record? And a solo like acoustic record. The the record that the country label wants from me, after coming and seeing the live show that I played, the last show that I played here in Nashville, I played at the Ryman, just me acoustically with no backup band or anything. And and what uh, is it? Just a blend of everything, kind of. Um. Yeah, I was playing. I was playing the some of the songs off the country records, and I was playing some of the songs off the some of the songs from Stained. Gotcha. And uh, but all just me and the acoustic guitar, so that simplifies everything. That takes away the country flavor. That takes away the rock flavor. That takes away everything and just leaves it a skeletal structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Scott Borchetta the president of my record label was so moved by that show <clears throat> this record that he this next record he wants from me which would have been a country record he wants a totally acoustic record oh cool well yeah. it's something you do great man so we're looking forward to hearing it i i'm you know i really am a fan of your voice dude i'm a fan of your songwriting i I have no problem saying that. I'm pretty humble when it comes to letting people know when they've done great work, they've done great work. And you really have wrote some amazing songs over the years that I really still, you know, live on my playlist. So good luck with all the writing, man. Thank you, man. And I, um, <clears throat> I promised the fans that at some point soon, I'm going <laughs> to do a performance and we're really hoping we can get one from you. 
because I know all the girls out there would love to hear you sing with your acoustic all by yourself. Prop up your cell phone. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. But if you come around to it and you're okay with it, shoot me something and I'm going to assemble a really cool performance from all my friends, all the artists that have kind of come on the show. And you are more than welcome, you know, to be a part of that. And we'd love for you to be a part of that if you're down with it. I'm totally down. Yeah, you uh, heard that, everybody. He said yes. A lot I said of people yes, saying uh, yes. I don't see any music yet, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, dude, I'm going to cut you loose, man. Listen, stay healthy. Say hi to the family. I think Zoe's like my daughter's age now, right? Didn't they? Same time? Zoe, 18, Zoe, 19? Missed, Zoe missed her graduation this year. I she's mean, graduating she, high school this year? Yeah. yeah so, Scarlet too. So, so they're the they're, same age. They're, they're getting a, a mid-July out on the football field, very social distanced actual graduation ceremony which is cool Good. they weren't gonna at first they were yeah, just they gonna, gonna do, do it anything. they were gonna do it virally i guess yep um i'm so happy about that so i'm happy about that too i'm happy that my schedule will allow me to be there um and uh and my my oldest baby is going into college this year holy crap i know me too man <laughs> We're running parallel lives for some reason here. And then and then my middle my middle daughter turns sixteen wow. on the night. Wow. So that's two cars you gotta buy. <laughs> that next fucking record better be good. <laughs> Dad's buying two cars. Oh, that's good. Uh, just one. The other one already has hers. There you go. Have the older one take the younger one to school. That's how you do it. That's how we were we have been doing it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right, my man. Great seeing you again, dude. You know, I love you like a brother. I cannot wait to see you out there so we can play some music together somewhere on a stage. I miss it for some reason. I feel like it's been years since we've been out playing any of us. I know. It's it's the last thing that they're going to allow to start happening, too. We're, We're the last we're the last folks that get to go back to work. So that's why I've I've turned it into a that's why I've turned it into a creative summer and I'm. I'm, I'm trying to work when I can't work. Well, like I've told everybody, for us, life didn't change too much in that sense because if it's writing time for us, we kind of isolate to write anyways. Yeah. So for that reason, COVID doesn't really affect us in that way. We have to be alone to be able to get creative. But as far as the live stuff, I'm really starting to miss it. I miss playing out. I miss the fans. I miss the that whole energy that happens. So 21, I'm hoping it's going to be a great year for everybody, man. Me too. All right, bro. I'm, I'm hoping that the second half of 2020 is 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 looking up. Yes, I like the optimism. Keep it up. Yes, sir. You look handsome. No. Getting a little older. I told you. I told I don't you. Know who has more grays right now, me or you? I'm gonna go with you, <laughs> <laughs> only because you have more of it. All right, man. You. We'll talk soon. Great seeing you. Yes, sir. All right. Be good. So that's it, everybody. I just want to thank Aaron again for coming on. I really love that dude, man. It's just so nice during these times to be able to catch up with your true friends, people that you've admired and just had a relationship with so long over the years. So I really encourage you guys to do that. I want to remind you of what Jim Wahlberg said a few episodes back when he's like, you know what? Sometimes if you're not feeling good, man, just start out by reaching out to a friend or even someone that you haven't talked to in a while open that relationship up again. You know, if you feel okay doing that, sometimes it's cool to check in with people and it's really cool to be able to ask them how they're doing. And, you know, just by doing that sometimes, as long as you're committed to hearing the response um, and being attentive towards their response when you ask them how they are, um, sometimes it can just really lead you um, to, to get you out of that place of funk, that little black hole that you're in. So, you know, reach out to some people, man. That's why they're there. That's why they pass through your life for some reason or another. They're there. So connect with them and, uh, use that time wisely. So anyways, um, that's it for now. Um, we are still, uh, putting together some live performances for you guys. And I'm really hoping to be able to do something cool and special. So I'll keep you posted as we get closer. But for now, that's all. See you next time on Hometown Sessions.